It's a different sort of Hollywood. It's not the Hollywood of the West. It's the Hollywood of the East. You will find the Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia. It's one of the most historic cemeteries in all of the United States and one of the most visited cemeteries in all of the United States. You will find the resting place of three presidents, two of the United States and one of the Confederate United States of America. Let's go in and see what we can find. Travel across America with me to Richmond, Virginia and the Hollywood Cemetery. In 1876, the Gothic Revival stone structure designed to look like a ruined medieval tower was built at the entrance to house the chapel, office, and receiving vault. In 1915, the original entrance was closed and the present one was opened to better facilitate cars. And I went up to the door, grabbed the handle, and it wouldn't open. They should have been opened, but they weren't. The Hollywood Cemetery was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1969. It contains 135 acres and was built in 1849. That's pre-Civil War. It's located at 412 South Cherry Street in Richmond. It is on Oregon Hill and looks over the James River. This is only one of three places in the entire United States that contains the burials of two U.S. Presidents. Do you know where the other two locations are? Tell me in the comments below. I'll be taking you to one of them very soon. It's not that far away. Due to Richmond's role as the capital of the Confederate States of America during the American Civil War, the cemetery contains the burials of many government officials of the Confederacy, including President Jefferson Davis. And we will also go to the grave of George Pickett. The cemetery contains the remains of over 11,000 Confederate soldiers, the largest number buried in one cemetery. They are memorialized by the Monument of the Confederate War Dead, a 90-foot-tall granite pyramid built in 1869. The cemetery is considered the unofficial National Confederate Cemetery and has hosted ceremonies commemorating Confederate Memorial Day since 1866. This is one of the most visited cemeteries in America and certainly Virginia. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and tell you where the other two places are because I'm not sure you'll guess who the other one is. One of them is Arlington National Cemetery, where you'll find the graves of John F. Kennedy and William Howard Taft. The second place is the United First Parish Church in Quincy, Massachusetts. I doubt you would have ever thought of that one. It contains the burial of two U.S. presidents. Yes, John Adams and John Quincy Adams. They're in a crypt below the church. We drove through the cemetery and parked at the entrance to President's Circle to find the graves of those two presidents that are buried there. Do you know who they are? One is John Tyler. John Tyler, President of the United States from 1841 to 1845. He was born in Charles City County, Virginia, March 29th in 1790. And he died here in the city of Richmond, January 18th. 1862. He was our 10th president and a member of the Whig Party. After his presidency, he retired to Sherwood Forest, not the one you're thinking of, but his estate near Charles City, Virginia, and lived quietly until just before the Civil War. In February 1861, he headed a Southern Peace Mission to Washington, seeking a compromise on the issues that threatened the Union. In April, at a Virginia Succession Convention, Tyler voted in favor of Virginia leaving the Union. He won election to the Confederate House of Representatives in November of 1861. I bet you didn't know that. He was part of the Confederacy. He died at the Exchange Hotel in Richmond before taking seat as a member of the Confederate House of Representatives. In 1915, Congress dedicated a monument to Tyler's memory in Hollywood Cemetery, where he is buried beside his second wife, Julia. Tyler's occupation was that of an attorney, but he had a long military and governmental service. He was the captain of a volunteer company in Richmond, Virginia in 1813. He was a member of the Virginia House of Delegates. He was a U.S. representative. He was the governor of Virginia, a U.S. senator, and vice president of the United States. If you can tell me who he served as vice president for, tell me in the comments below. 
I'll give you a hint. He was the first vice president to succeed to the presidency because of the death of his predecessor. What was his name? We had gone to the Hollywood Cemetery primarily to see the graves of these three presidents. While we were standing at John Tyler's grave, I looked to the right and saw this grave. It's that of Matthew Fontaine Maury. He is the pathfinder of the seas. He was a scientist, oceanographer, educator. If you have ever heard about the pathways in the oceans, you know of Matthew Fontaine Maury, the Pathfinder of the Seas. He also is a native Virginian, born in Spotsylvania in 1806 and dying in Lexington, Virginia in 1873. Now let's go on to the second president, James Monroe. James Monroe was our fifth president and his term was from March 1817 to March of 1825 and he was a member of the Republican Party. He is famously known for the Monroe Doctrine. He was born in Westmoreland County, Virginia. He also was a lawyer. His military service included being the officer in the 3rd Virginia Regiment and Continental Army, 1776 to 1779. He was a military commissioner for the Southern Army, a representative to the Virginia Legislature, a member of Governor Jefferson's Council, representative to Virginia House of Delegates, a representative to the Continental Congress, a representative to the Virginia Assembly, a representative to the U.S. Senate, the Minister to France, Minister to England and Governor of Virginia, Secretary of State, and Secretary of War. He certainly accomplished many things in his lifetime. Incredible. He served two terms. What's interesting, in his second term, he won 231 electoral votes, and John Quincy Adams, an independent Republican, had one electoral vote. He became a writer, and at the time of his death, Andrew Jackson was the president. You know, Old Hickory? In his Monroe Doctrine, one of the famous phrases include, The American continents are henceforth not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European powers. The Monroe Doctrine, 1823. In an upcoming video, I'll take you to the birthplace of Monroe. They have a lovely, lovely replica home, visitor center, and very unique walk of the history of this famous president. But that's coming soon. Have you subscribed yet? If you haven't, please subscribe. And if you have, thank you. Back to Hollywood Cemetery. This tomb does contain the remains of President James Monroe. But upon his death in New York City on July 4th, 1831, do you remember the other president who died on July 4th? I want to encourage you to go watch the video on the day after the 4th of July. Upon his death in New York City on July 4th, 1831, his body was interred in New York City's Marble Cemetery on 2nd Street. In 1858, the 100th anniversary of his birth, Municipal officials and representatives of the state of Virginia decided that the remains should be returned to his home state for reburial at Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia. And we're going to learn that the president of the Confederacy, his remains were reinterred at Hollywood Cemetery also. And we will be getting to that very soon. As I mentioned earlier, this stone pyramid memorial is dedicated to the Confederacy, and one of the signs reads a memorial to the Confederate women of Virginia. And they also mention Charles Henry Dimmock. He was the captain of the Corps of Engineers, an architect, an engineer, a lawyer, and he designed and supervised the construction of the monument. Another key person in our past is General George E. Pickett. He is also buried there at Hollywood Cemetery. Next to his grave, we found this medallion memorial marker. Fate denied them victory, but gave them a glorious immortality. Furled, but not forgotten. And here is a section for the Gettysburg dead and an unknown soldier's grave. Dr. Rufus Benjamin Weaver. Exactly who is this guy? At the end of the war between the states, plans were being made to return the Confederate dead from Gettysburg. Ladies Memorial Associations and many veterans began to raise funds and to petition the federal government to let the remains be brought home. Samuel Weaver, who retrieved the Union dead, was their choice to supervise the task. Before he could start, he was killed in a railroad accident. The grisly work then fell to his son, Dr. Rufus B. Weaver. He was to be paid $3.25 for each body shipped south. Wow. As a doctor of anatomy, he proved to be the right man. At the opening of each grave, he ensured all remains possible were located. Overcoming many obstacles, he exhumed and sent south the remains of 3,000 
320 soldiers. 2,935 came to Richmond. This is incredible, isn't it? As the bodies were returned, Major General George E. Pickett met each shipment and led a procession of the old veterans, dignitaries, and Richmond citizens following the dead to Hollywood Cemetery. Pickett lies with these men today on Gettysburg Hill. Dr. Weaver was paid for the first year, but then due to a depression that hit the nation, funding ceased. Ultimately, he received about half what he was owed. From his own resources, he continued his noble work. Thanks, Doc. In grateful appreciation, acknowledging a debt of honor owed by all Southerners, and recognizing his generosity and humanity, the Sons of the Confederate Veterans place this marker in honor of Dr. Rufus B. Weaver. And I do want to add at this point that the cemetery no longer allows the flying or the placement of any Confederate flags in the cemetery. They give several reasons, and one of them is they do not want vandalism of the graves. Which makes sense. Sad, but makes sense. Now our last stop. Speaking of the Confederacy in the South and the role that Richmond played and Hollywood Cemetery, this is the final resting place of Jefferson Finnis Davis and his wife, Verena Ann Davis. I want to encourage you to watch my video on the Gulf Coast Beauvoir and Historic Estate. It was once the home of Jefferson and Verena Davis. The monument reads, Jefferson Davis at rest, an American soldier, and defender of the Constitution, born in Christian County, Kentucky, June 3, 1808. Died at New Orleans, Louisiana, December 6, 1889. If you watch my other videos on Jefferson Davis, you will learn that that was the largest funeral ever held in New Orleans. He was a West Point graduate, the class of 1828, a member of the House of Representatives from Mississippi. He served as a colonel in the Mexican-American War. He was a brigadier general in the U.S. Army. He was a member of the U.S. Senate. He was Secretary of War and served in the U.S. Senate a second time. One of my other top 10 stops in Richmond is the White House of the Confederacy, and we'll be going there soon. The Hollywood Cemetery that we're talking about in this video is Stop 3. Stop 1 is Capitol Square. Stop 2 is, as I just mentioned, the White House of the Confederacy. Stop 4, Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site. You will want to watch that full video. And then, Stop 5 is the Poe Museum. All literary fans need to watch this video. It's absolutely incredible. This place has more Poe memorabilia than any other place in the world. And Stop 6, Chimborazo Medical Museum. It's part of the Richmond National Battlefield Park, a medical hospital where the chance of survival at Chimborazo was 90%. This is one of the most famous Confederate hospitals. You'll want to watch that video. Stop seven is the St. John's Church. Give me liberty or give me death. Did I tell you I met Thomas Jefferson there? And then stop eight is the historic burial ground and Lumpkin Slave Jail. Stop nine is the Main Street Station. And stop ten, the Egyptian building. You'll want to go back and watch that video also. But now, let's go back to stop three, Hollywood Cemetery, and let's finish up with Jefferson Davis. And I do want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't yet. Can you push that button? Jefferson Davis's wife erected this in memory of her husband, President of the Confederate States of America, 1861 to 1865. Richmond, Virginia, filled with history, filled with information, filled with great places to see and to experience. Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip.